what it what it really made me appreciate was how, what a privilege it is to be alive. The Mercedes Benz Interview Lounge. So Mike Posner's with us. Now, there's confusion. You have a new song called Home. When is that coming out? Or is it recorded yet? <laughs> it's coming out April 8th. Oh, oh okay. So we so, have a date. So Three I think days. it's recorded already, right? Yes. Because okay, yeah, <laughs> we don't know with you. Someone said, we don't even know if, rec if it's recorded yet. I mean, I don't, <laughs> and that's fine. You can record it and release it the same day now. It doesn't matter, you know? Yes, yes. I, um, I actually was touched... Uh, a couple of days ago, you uploaded that spoken word poem from the boat in Antarctica, and That's I, right. I was so moved by that poem. I was, and it was just, it was so pure and so great. I shared it with my friends online, and I don't know. But tell us where you were. How did it come about? And I know that you know, once we talk about it, people are going to hop onto your Instagram and watch it. Oh man, uh, I just got invited on this really cool trip. Um, it actually wasn't that hard. People here. You know, because of some of the other adventures I've been on that, that have been pretty challenging. Um, but this was like a cruise, you know, <laughs> basically like a cruise to Antarctica. And uh, we had like a little day trip on one of these little Zodiac boats and we're looking at penguins and sea leopards and stuff. And so cool. um, one of my friends had a camera, so it did a poem on the, on the little boat out there in the, in the Arctic waters there. Or Antarctic waters. I yeah, I can't. Say. I never say it correctly, uh, but <laughs> it was it was something that you just. I, I don't know. Use the term "pull off." You pulled off brilliantly because that's not what I'm. I'm it's just you and your life travels, your world travels, connected to your art, to your music. It's it's a very unique unique way you're you're presenting it to us, and I just I, I'm always touched by what you do. And what's next? Because last time you were with us, you teased you're about to do something big, and then you did. Mount Everest. Right. For God's sake. <laughs> well. Right. What's next? Yeah. Well, Mount Everest, um, it, it really changed my life. Um, and not in the way I expected. You know, one might think you get to the summit of Mount Everest and you you'd feel pride, maybe. Um, but I felt humility, you know, and Mount Everest is just so gosh darn dangerous, Elvis. Um, we we're climbing down past, you know the bodies of, of people that were alive a week before. And uh, it was a beautiful, amazing, transcendent, also simultaneously silly and insane and selfish thing to do. Um, and so what it, what it really made me appreciate was how, what a privilege it is to be alive, you know, be a living human being still, you know, most people are already dead. right? So, us, you know, we still have the privilege of, of, of being alive and, 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 you know, breathing and, and feeling joy and also even feeling pain in some ways is a pleasure, right? Um, so that's what, that's what Everest taught me. So this is a long way of answering your question in that, you know, I'm not really looking for a way to, to uh, put my life in that much danger again. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm actually uh, doing pretty much the same thing I was doing before I left for my walk across America before I climbed Mount Everest. That is like Monday through Friday, I go to the studio and I, I make music. Um, but, but it, I do it from a different place. So it's the same on the outside, but it's, it's different on the inside. If that makes any sense at all. It makes all the <laughs> sense in the world. So, it's, so music has not taken a backseat to you living this incredible life. It's you're doing both. You're juggling. Yeah, well, I was always making music, you know. Uh, I was always writing music, though. Um, you know, the climbing sort of had my first priority because it had to. You know, it was dangerous to do it any other way. But um, I was always writing on my own. But I was, like, living in little towns, you know, in the mountains. And so I could, what I couldn't do was collaborate, and I love to collaborate. I also love writing alone. I write a lot of my best stuff alone. But um, – now I get to collaborate, you know, so I, you know, I can spend time in California and, and work with the, the best people in the world. And it's, it's really fun. You know, you're, you're living this life that most of us would do anything to be able to live, to be able just to 
travel. How many continents have you been on? Have you been on seven continents already? Do you know? I think I've been only on six. I haven't been to Africa. Six. Oh, I've oh, only oh, been on six. Oh, 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 oh. Only oh, six. Oh, I got oh, oh, what a failure. <laughs> but no, you got to change you, that. But you know what? You're out there learning. You're learning. You're experiencing things that we dream of learning and experiencing. And uh, what is your advice for all of us who are sort of landlocked? We've got to kind of stay centrally located for now. But we still want to learn life's lessons from this beautiful planet of ours and all the things you've been experiencing. How do we do it from our living room? I mean, what do we do? Hey, look, there's like you can go deeper in any place, right? And first of all, before I even go into that question, I I agree. I have this this amazing life and and basically uh, my audience, they they gave me enough money when I was in my early 20s to realize that money didn't really change my my moment-to-moment -moment experience of life, right? So I, I got all these things that I dreamed of, a record deal, hit single, and, you know, popularity, taking my shirt off at concerts, all this stuff. And I realized, like, I, I just kind of feel the same. So that can't be it, right? That can't be what life is about. And And so what is? And that's why I've set off on this journey. You know, that's why I walked across America. That's why I climbed miles. That's why I've spent that time in solitude at the monastery. You know, that's why I've become a certified Wim Hof instructor this year. It's in search of what, what, what does change our moment to moment experience of life. Right. And that's what my art, you know, and my life is about is not just learning those things for myself, but then, reporting back right that's that's how i view my job someone else might think like yeah you stand on stage and sing pop songs but that's not what i think i do so that's one now i was just i always just had this experience at my house the other day um i practiced this thing called walking meditation right that i learned that i learned from titnet Han. Huh? you ever heard of titnet Han? Huh? no beautiful man he just died this year uh he was in his late 80s um got exiled from his, he was a Vietnamese Buddhist monk and was exiled from his, his own country. Couldn't go back there for four years. Um, Martin Luther King Jr. nominated him for a Nobel Peace Prize uh, in the 70s. And just this beautiful man that, that should have been, with all the horrible things that happened to him, should have been cynical and misanthropic, but was the opposite, you know, a symbol of compassion. Um, he would lead, you know, meditation retreats to heal American soldiers that had P PTSD that, you know, the same people that were killed, you know, killing his countrymen. And uh, wow. he has this practice of walking meditation, right? So you walk outside and you walk, he says, aimlessly. So you have no place to go. You're not trying to get anywhere. And, you know, five, 10 minutes will do the trick. So, you know, helps you leave your phone behind, maybe at the house. And you just walk. And as you walk, you connect to your breath. And just feel the breath and feel your feet touching the ground. And it kind of feels like silly for a minute, two minutes, three minutes. After four or five minutes, you're like, wow. Like, it, it, it's so in tune. And you, all of a sudden, you notice in that tree that you walk by, you know, 10 million times every day. And it's like, wow, this tree is beautiful, you know. So I don't know if that that answers the spirit of, of your question, but that's one thing I was experiencing. You know, just yesterday, I didn't have to travel anywhere. There was so much more I could appreciate and fall in love with here at my house. Well, I know, but you, you're, it looks like your house is in the middle of uh, a, a nice sanctuary of of environment. <laughs> yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> if, I do, if I do walking meditation here in New York City, I'm, I'm screwed. Right. <laughs> it's like, wow, hey. I never noticed that guy peeing on that yeah. building over oh, there. Oh, look at that garbage pile. It's much prettier the time, this time around. A rat's going to steal your phone. <laughs> we, we, we can be a bit cynical here in the city. Anyway, so no, Mike Posner. Uh, I've, I've practiced it in New York City many a times. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a, there's a beauty in New York City that's no place else in the world. And that's probably why you live there. Well, yeah, but it's the, you're right. And this is a different type of beauty. It's a loud beauty. Yeah. It it's very loud. And I try not to breathe. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's a stinky beauty. It stinks. That's right. So uh, as we were speaking with Mike Posner, he was off in another room recording his new song, Home, <laughs> <laughs> which we're going to play it as soon as it comes out. April 18th? 8th? 8th. I can't wait, yeah. Mike. 
And I do encourage everyone to uh, check out Mike Posner on Instagram. And that spoken word poem from Antarctica on the boat was, I'm telling you, I, I was in tears. I, I had to listen to it over and over and watch you do it over and over. It was amazing. Thank you so much, Elvis. You're just such a great human being. You know what? Thank you for being in our lives. And I can't wait to play your new song on the 8th, okay? My man. We love you. Love you. Love you too. Have a great day, man. Thank you. You too, Elvis. Awesome. Thanks for having me back on. Come to our stinky pile of trash someday and say <laughs> hi to us. I'd love to. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge.